Okay, hello everybody. This is Minister Gloria Drummond, Back to the Altar Ministries. The date is December, I keep saying that, October the 22nd of 2022. This is going to be like a straight talk. It could be testimony part eight. I'm not sure yet what I'm gonna what I'm gonna title this. I just wanted to get on here and do a like a heart to heart from my heart from my heart to everybody. Okay. There's kids playing outside, so and this if this sounds like a pity party, it's not meant to sound like one. <clears throat> I just wanted to get on here and tell everybody my feelings about things. My feelings about things and my beliefs and that I am, yes, I am a child of God that called me seven years ago. He called me seven years ago to be his minister, minister, evangelist, whatever, however way you want to, you want to put it. And I've had everything thrown at me that, that you could imagine thrown at me, trying to put me down, you know, certain people, Lord, give me the words to say. Lord, give me the words to say. Holy Spirit, give me the words to say. I will never, ever give up. That I know. I will never, ever give up. That I know. That I will never, ever stop loving my Lord, serving my Lord, as imperfect as I am, as imperfect as I am. People's put me down because I watched Gospel Minute Live. People put me down for that. If it's about, if it's about Jesus, I'm going to do what I want to do, what glorifies the Lord. A lot of people, and I guess I'll say Protestants, a lot of Protestants, they tend to knock people down, knock people down. If you don't believe the way I do, then 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 you're not right. You're you're on you're on the wrong path. And all kinds of things that the Protestant the way the way that they do. Slam people. And I'm all the time saying, stop knocking people down. Loving pe to love people. And most of you know the latest, the latest with me. And I need to go to a cardiologist. I don't want to. I don't want to. But when, when, you, when you go through things for years, not just a few weeks or a few months, but when you go things for, through things for years, and mine goes way back to when I was a teenager. When I was about 16. I had a happy childhood. Well, until we left my grandma's house. That's in some of my testimony. When I was eight. And then my heartbreak started when I was about 14 is when my heart, my heartache started. 
<laughs> through the years, from about 14 on, about 14 on, and everything that I had to, to, to go through. Now, this is from my heart. This is from my heart. Okay? All the times that I was in the hospital, surgeries, loss of babies, nerves, in the hospital nine times in one year, nine times in one year, people thought I was nuts. She's whacked out. Well, they kept poking all kinds of medicine down me, using me as a guinea pig. And one doctor told Steve, my husband, Joyce's dad, she, he was going to put me in a mental hospital. <laughs> he said, like hell you will over my dead body. He said, you've made her the way she is because of all the medicines that you, all the pills that you poked down her. Pharmaceuticals. At one time, I told you, I said this on one of my testimonies. At one time, when Jorcy had her dolls, she had one doll she named Penny. She had Annie, and I asked her if I could have the other doll. So she said, she, yeah, Mom, yeah. So that was all due to me losing my babies, all my babies. And I mean all of my babies. There was another one that I lost. Another one that I lost. Then I couldn't give her dad any more children. I was 29 years old when I finally had to go through that horrible, horrible hysterectomy because I almost had cancer. That's when I lost the twins. And I've talked about this before on my testimonies. Everything, most of it stems from believing my grandma when I was eight years old, when we lived with my grandma. And my first love, when I was 14, my first love. We got engaged when I, we were, I was 15. We, we dated, we dated off and on th for three years. <clears throat> I was devastated. We broke up. Well, he got called to service. I've said this, like I said, I've said this on other videos, <clears throat> on other videos. And then I married that older man when I was, 17, I think I was, 17. I don't even remember what month we got married. I don't even remember. I, I, but I do know that um, I might have been 18. I think I was 18. I think I was 18. And his wife, my mother knew the family. <clears throat> I went to church, to school with his kids. I went to school with his kids. And his ex-wife had even told me. She said, Gloria, I'm going to tell you something, honey. You are a young girl. I left Richard after 17 years of marriage. I left him because he was a, a abusive and a drunk. Abusive and a drunk. What I went through with him. <laughs> My brother kept trying to tell me, he said, sis, quit going back to him. I'd leave him and then go back to him. Leave him and go back to him. Of course, the third time was it. That was the last, that was the last time. And I, I, I told about how I, I got back with Joyce's dad after us going to school together. We just lived a block apart.
But th this this spans way back. I'm like I said, this spans way back. And I know I'm not the only one that's had had a, a lot of bad things happen. I know. But this is me. I'm talking about me. About me. I always made the wrong decisions on things after I lost my first love when we broke up. I always made the wrong decisions. <laughs> I'm not going to go into a whole uh, I'm not going to go into a whole lot. But this religion thing, this I'll just say religion thing. This religion thing. I was called. Again, I was called. People say, well, how do you know you were called? I know I was called. Just leave it at that. I know I was called. Men that says that women can't preach. Women, men that says that women can't hold, hold a title. Women are to keep silence in the church. Anything that a man can do could do to knock a woman down or try to knock a woman down. There were a lot of women in the Bible. A lot of good women in the Bible. There were seven or eight prophetesses in the Bible. The night that I did that one video when that came out I was shocked literally shocked a prophetess I was in shock And later on that night, I, I prayed. I said, Lord, I said, I'm at a loss for words. You've been giving me prophecies. People don't want to, don't, don't believe prophecies that you don't believe. Uh, I mean, all I know is that he would tell me to get a pen, and be like the pen of a ready writer. I'd get a pen and, and my, my tablet and I'd write. I just write. He hasn't given me anything else since I've been upset and all that. He hasn't given me anything else. He knows me. He created me. He knows how I am. He gives me a little bit at a time because he knows how I am. But those prophecies that God gave me came from God. Yes, the devil the devil can use people too, yes. But I know beyond a shadow of a doubt that they came from God. And I know I know this. I know they came from God. I felt the Holy Spirit on me as I was writing. I'm gonna speed it all up. Let, let, let's just speed this story up a little bit. When you have people coming against you, People in your own family, even if, even if it's not meant to hurt me or come against me, you know, I, I want to specify this, clarify this, even if it's not meant to hurt me. When it was prophesied to me that my health was going to decline, that is speaking Curse words, a curse word, that's speaking death. That's not from God. That is not from God. That your health is going to decline. That's like going to a fortune teller and, and having them tell you, well, I have some bad news. Your health's going to get worse and then, then you're going to die. That is not of God. 
I don't care what anybody says, that is not of God. And like I said on this, on that other video, I rebuke and cast down all manner of evil against me, death on me. I cast it down in the name of Jesus. I cast it out again. Like I said, I will live and not die. I will live and not die. I will live and not die. And I'm not going to listen to any more of that from anybody. I don't care who you are. But there's been people this last few years that have done nothing but put me down, try to knock me down. There's still a few people that are with me and love me, care about me. A very select few. A very few, but there are still some people that are back, that back me up. I can name them on one hand. There's not very many. Not very many. That would back me up. I mean, that will back me up, I should say. That, that will back me up. But when you're constantly put down, put down, put down, knocked down, most people would have gave up a long time ago. And I almost did a few times. I almost did a few times. But the Lord keeps picking me up. The Lord keeps picking me up. No, daughter, you're not going to give up. You're not going to give up. I called you for a reason. I called you for a reason. I called you for a reason. So come heck or high water, I'm going to do what God called me to do. Be what God called me to be. If I if I want to watch Gospel Minute Live or anybody else that I like, if I want to watch them, I'm going to watch them. I'm going to watch them. If it's about Jesus and discernment, 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 then I'm going to watch them. The only person that I care about how, how they feel is God. That's the only person. I don't care what people think. I don't care what people think. Be it my own family or anybody else, I don't care what they think. And to you men out there, to you men out there, that says a woman is to keep silence in the church. You don't have the authority to usurp authority over it. no man. That's not what I'm trying to do. That's not what I'm trying to do. I'm not trying to usurp authority over nobody, over no man. And I've said this before, too. If God puts somebody in my life that is a man of God, a true man of God, I would walk beside him, stand beside him. I wouldn't try to be over him. I've got brains enough to know that. The man is, is the head, you know. But I'm not married. I haven't been married in years. Yes, I made a few mistakes after her dad left me, yes. You know, his dad left. She, he couldn't take any more of my illness and my... Everything, he couldn't take it. He wasn't strong enough. And we, and we weren't close to the Lord at that time. We were not close to the Lord. So the devil stepped in. It's just very sad that my own family 
my other family. I'm going to bring I'm going to talk about this too because I'm going to be sharing this on Facebook. My brother. My brother. There's 13 years between me and my brother. I'm 70 and he'll be 83 on Christmas Day. I've not talked to him in a long time. I have a nephew and a niece. A niece and a nephew. They don't want anything to do with me. Because I'm religious. Don't want nothing to do with me. I know that they lost their mother four years ago. I know that. I'm not going to go into too much of that either. I'm not going to go into too much of that either. But just I just wanted them to know that I love them dearly. If you don't want anything to do with me, that's fine. If you don't want anything to do with me, that's fine. I had to ask my nephew for my brother's phone number because my brother had had his phone number changed. And I didn't know it. I got a recording saying that this number is no longer in service. So I, I got a hold on Messenger of my nephew. And a few minutes later, he, he put, he sent back my, my brother's new cell phone number. Have I called him? No. No. He knows my number. He knows my number. I shouldn't have to talk. I shouldn't have to call him. We were always close. He was very protective of me. He was very protective of his baby sister. When he found out that he was going to have a baby sister all them years ago, he went around the neighborhood saying, I'm going to have a, a baby, a baby, a well, brother or sister at that time. But then when I was born, he went all around the neighborhood saying, I've got a baby sister. I've got a baby sister. But he was very protective of me through the years. Well, there was things that he wanted to do. That, that's a whole other thing. But... He had some health issues going on, so he wasn't able to do some things that he wanted to. But I love my brother dearly, and I miss him. When we lost my mom, we stopped having our get-togethers. We stopped having the get-togethers. And I said, well, hey, I ain't dead. I'm not dead. We stopped all that. And that old table, well, I'll have to get up and show you. I want to show you this table. We don't have the leaf. We don't have the leaf to it. We don't have the leaf to it. If you can see it through this lawnmower, that's our get together table. And I used to give, we used to give Joycey her baths on that table. When she was a tiny baby, we gave her her baths on that table. And we had all of her get-togethers on that table for years. That's why I'm trying to hang on to it. For the memories. The memories. The memories of my mom. My brother, after we lost my dad, my brother took, we had just got our church started, so my brother took the sign. It was in our yard, God's Holy Sanctuary. He took the sign home. He took, a, he took the altar that Daddy had built. He took it. I don't know if he still got it or not. I don't know if he still got them or not. I don't know. I don't know. I know Larry was very close to my mom. I mean, very close to my dad, I mean. He wasn't my dad's blood son, no. But he thought of my brother just like his own son. There's been lots of times I've needed my brother. I've needed my brother. I've needed him.
I got off on something else, but that's okay. This is a heart to heart, a heart to heart talk, like a testimonial talk, straight talk, whatever, however way you want to put it. What time is it? Nine o'clock. On to something else. Am I wrong for asking people's help, for people's help? Am I wrong? I'm not begging, begging for money. It's not a prosperity gospel-like deal. And there has been good people that have helped, yes. But I'm put down because they say I shouldn't be on there asking for money. Yes, for my God shall supply all of my needs according to his riches and glory. Yes, yes. Staying here is killing us. Our finances. Every, every place we see about is a dead end. Either they don't allow dogs. They ask way too much rent, and then they want all the rent and deposit at once. I know beyond a shadow of a doubt there is a place. I know there's a place for us. I know there is. I know there is a place. Excuse me. I know there's a place. Get the hiccups. But I do put my faith and trust in my Lord and to the people that genuinely care about me. I love you dearly. I love you dearly. And yes, we will lose people. We will lose people. People will walk out of our lives. And if they don't come back, well, then they don't come back. There was a reason why they didn't. Maybe the Lord took them out of our lives. You know? And I've talked enough about my first love. I'm not even gonna I'm not even gonna bring any of that up. I've talked enough about it. I've exhausted that subject, I think, on that. I'm not gonna bring any more, I'm not talking about it anymore. So anyway, I didn't want to make this too awful long. I just felt I wanted to get on here and kind of kind of vent a little bit, kind of t talk to you guys a little bit. I do have 14 subscribers on this new channel. I thank you all. I thank you all. But I'm not crazy, people. I'm not crazy. <laughs> just... So many things have come at me. <clears throat> One thing, don't even more come at me till something else does. And I know that God puts us through tests. He, he, he puts us through tests to, to, to test our faith. I know that too. And sometimes I get in my flesh because we are, we tend to be carnal in our carnal flesh. So I'm going to ask everybody to keep, go ahead and keep praying for me, praying for this situation. Please keep praying for me. And like I said, if you don't want to, if you don't want to donate to me or give to me, if you don't want to, that's fine. You don't have to. You don't have to. You don't have to. I'm going to stop putting my my contact info on my videos. If you want if you want to contact me, there's other videos you can you can look in the description box. I'm going to stop doing that. I'm just going to stop doing it. Lord knows I don't want anybody getting to getting the idea. There she goes, like some of the mothers just wanting money. That ain't what it is. That's not what it is. Like I've said before, I'm not fake. I am not fake. 
far from fake. I'm imperfect. I'm not perfect. Far from perfect. But I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I've always tried to keep peace. I've always tried to keep the peace. But then when you're with a narcissistic person that I was with for almost 14 years, narcissists are very good at what they do. Some of them realize it. Some of them don't. It's their way or no way. They've got to have complete control. They can be very vindictive if they don't have complete control. And I said, nobody's going to control me. Nobody's going to tell me what I can and cannot do. I have one boss, and that's my Lord above. Nobody's going to tell me that I, what I can do and what I can't do. Well, it didn't end up, it didn't end up good, as you all, most of you know from my testimony. It didn't end up well. And I kept trying to warn him. I said, the way you're acting, rejecting Jesus, rejecting the Lord completely. I said, the way you're acting, I said, it's not going to end up well. It's not going to end up well. Well, his health went down. His family came in, drew us out. Thank God he put it in, my, he put it in me to find another place. And we did, even though it, we couldn't afford it, but we did it at the time. We did it at the time. We did it at the time. So anyway, I've been on here 32 minutes. So I'm gonna do the Lord, I'm gonna do, go ahead and do the Our Father. Thank you for listening. Thank you for listening. And I love you all with the love of Christ Jesus. Be blessed and not stressed. Be blessed and not stressed. Keep your faith in the Lord. Keep your faith in God. So I'm going to go ahead and do the Our Father, and I'm going to go ahead and close for tonight. I wanted to say more, but maybe I'll do, maybe I'll do a part two on this. Maybe I can do a part two or something. So, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen and amen. And they all said amen in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Again, be blessed and not stressed. And take your burdens to the Lord. Leave them at Jesus' feet. All right. So this has been Minister Gloria Drummond, Back to the Altar Ministries. Again, thank you for watching this. If you want to comment, feel free to leave your comments. No hateful comments, or I will I will delete them out. No hateful comments. All right. Again, this is December. I always say December, October the twenty second of twenty twenty two. And yes, yesterday was Joe's birthday, his sixty fifth birthday. Sixty fifth birthday. Yep. So, all righty. Until my next video, my next broadcast. May God richly, richly bless you, like old Red Skelton used to say. And may God bless old Red Skelton. Alrighty, good night.